Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker, for indulging me. Madam Speaker, I just want to indicate that the government needs to listen to the members of parliament. Because members of parliament deal directly with the communities. And if you listen to a house where both sides of the house are almost speaking with one voice, then you need to know that there's a problem. And if the people who are coming from maize growing areas are telling us that there's enough maize, why are we importing? Unless our main intention is to kill our farmers. So I would want to urge the government to listen to that. I also want to add my voice to the issue of GMOs. Madam Speaker, one of the members when they were speaking earlier was saying that most of us are speaking out of conjecture. Madam Speaker, I'm glad this house has people who are very well educated. My masters I did on intellectual property rights on plant genetic resources. And I can tell you one of the main things I dealt with was GMOs. And I can tell you that even in the United States where Bill Gates is coming from, this is a very contentious issue. And if it is so good, then he needs to go and sell the GMOs in his own country. We cannot be used as guinea pigs for things that we don't know yet and the impact as in this country. We are already dealing with a high impact of uh, cases of cancer. We don't know if these GMOs are going to cause cancer or if actually they are the ones contributing to cancer because some of people still find a way of bringing them in. So Madam Speaker, let us not use our children and our people as guinea pigs. We are not saying we should co completely outlaw, but let us test, let us research. And once it is proven, I want to even thank uh, Dr. Nikal that uh, from a health perspective, where you are not sure, where research is giving divergent views, avoid. And I think it's Honorable Beatrice that talked about we have just dealt with COVID. We don't know where COVID came from. We, for all we know, COVID could have been uh, generated from GMOs. If you actually, because we don't have time, if I actually was able to read uh, for you even how this GMO is generated, I, I don't even understand how we can even be sitting here thinking about it. And Madam Speaker, there's also one thing that people have talked about here, which I want to stress that we want to kill our farmers. In India, when these issues came, farmers were lighting themselves and dying because their livelihoods were being threatened. Why? Because of intellectual property rights. Once these seeds are produced, you cannot regrow the seeds. You must buy the seeds all the time in order to plant. What does that mean? That all our farmers will be buying seeds from the US all the time, from other countries all the time. Does that poor farmer in Rusiga or in Mfangano Island have the money to be rebuying uh, seed? What I know is our grandparents and our great-grandparents kept seed on the roofs they, for indigenous plants. And what they do is every planting season, you use it and reuse it. Another thing that the other problem that we have this with GMOs is they are not resilient to the diseases and the weather in our countries. And sometimes they may yield good uh, produce, but if unfortunately they get one attack because of their homogeneity, the entire populace of crops is destroyed. So let us not, it is proven, it has things which we have learned, which we have uh, looked at. It's not things conjecture. And it is not about politics. When Honorable Sally Kosge was the minister and I was here in the 10th parliament, and she was bringing a bill on that, and I was actually dissuading members from outside there. And she got very upset with me because we were on the same side. Not because I was playing politics, because I am playing, not playing, but I was talking facts from what I've learned in school. So I'd want to encourage us as a country, let us think of our people, let us not kill our people because the lure of money is very attractive for now. And I just want to encourage my brother Moses Kuria that now he has a very good position. Be careful about what you say. Kenyans are poor, Kenyans are hurting, Kenyans are hungry, careless statements can take us in a wrong direction. I thank you and I, I want to thank Honorable Kirwa for this important motion. Thank you, Madam Speaker.